This image was shot at ISO 6400 and besides the sky it's still unexposed. We can make use of Lightroom's denoise tool to safely restore the exposure without having to worry about noise. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of this video and now let's start. You might be wondering why didn't I shoot an HDR here? In fact I did plan on merging an HDR, however these clouds up here were moving way too fast and after merging the HDR it was clearly visible that there is something funny going on in here. So I decided to just use one raw file with the sky being nicely exposed at the cost of an underexposed foreground. Because I know we can restore pretty much everything and let on use AI denoise to get rid of all the noise in the image. You can apply the AI denoise right away. For some people this will yield some better Lightroom performance. However, what I like to do is to first go over the basic adjustments to get an idea of the noise level and then after that apply the AI denoise. So the first thing I'm doing here is to go into the basic tab. I want this image to be well saturated so I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Landscape which will push the saturation. It will also help a little bit with the darker areas of this image. Then let's slightly bring up the exposure. I'm not going too crazy here because exposure will also affect the sky and I really don't want to change this sky too much. To further work on the darkest parts we can bring up the shadows. Let's raise them a little bit like this. I'm also going to bring up the blacks. And let's see if we can bring up the whites without affecting the sky too much. Just right around here. The image is still unexposed but it already looks a little bit better than in the beginning. So next up I want to change the white balance slightly. I want this shot to feel a little warmer. So I'm going to bring up the temperature. And let's slightly bring down the tint. And that's about it for the white balance adjustments. Now I also want to bring up the texture making the shot a little bit more crisp and I'm going to drop the clarity and the dehaze very very gently to add a very soft glow on top of this image. So that is the image after the basic adjustments and before I continue with my usual editing workflow with the masking I now head into the details tab and what I want to do here let me first zoom in into this image you can already spot some quite heavy noise in here. What I want to do in here is to simply apply the AI noise reduction by clicking on denoise. And from this point on Lightroom will pretty much do everything automatically for you. You get a little preview right here. Clicking on it will reveal the noise level before AI denoise and this is the image with the noise removed. So what I did here is I increased the amount of denoise a little bit but with that out of the way, all you need to do is just hit the enhance button. And that's it. From this point on, we can continue with our regular workflow. That means I want to continue with a bit of masking. So let's jump into the masking panel right away. Let's work on the landscape in the foreground, making it slightly brighter. I'm starting this using a simple sky selection mask. Lightroom is selecting a little more than the sky, which is a problem. So to counter that, I'm going to click on those two dots, choose Intersect Mask With and choose Select Sky. This helps to clean up the edges a little bit. Still not perfect, but it should be enough. So what I want to do next, again, click on those two dots and I want to choose Invert Mask. This will give us a pretty good foreground selection, which we can now brighten up. So let's bring up the exposure. Let's also bring up the shadows to help with the darkest parts. I'm also going to increase the whites. And I do think I want to make the foreground slightly warmer. So I'm going to bring up the temperature to bring it more in line with the sky. And we can make it look a little more crispy by bringing up the clarity and add more contrast by bringing up the dehaze. Wonderful. I also want to work on the sky for a moment, so let me create another sky selection. This time I want to change the top part of the sky, adding some more contrast between those clouds. 
I don't want to affect the bright bottom part. So I'm going to say subtract and choose a radial gradient right here. And let's just take away a part from the bottom like this. There are still areas selected. So I'm going to subtract the brush and I'm going to just brush over these peaks. Okay, now what I wanna do in here is I wanna bring up the contrast, but we can also add way more punch to this part of the sky by bringing down the blacks. This will only affect the darker areas without changing those bright clouds. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, that looks awesome. I also want to make the top part a little colder. So let's bring down the temperature. And due to those adjustments, you can already see the top part of the sky getting a little bit too saturated. So we want to bring down the saturation. Perfect. I want to continue working on the sky with a new sky selection mask. This time I want to work on the bright part of the sky. So I'm going to click on those three dots once more, go to intersect mask with and choose radial gradient once more. Again, I'm covering the bright part like this. I'm going to subtract with the brush tool once more to get rid of a few areas, mostly on these mountains. And what I'm doing in here is to slightly bring up the exposure. I'm also going to slightly bump up the shadows, the whites and the blacks. So what this does is it helps to create some kind of special light effect as it increases the light coming from behind the mountain without affecting the top part of the sky. So we get this nice little gradient going on here. What I want to do as well is to make this area slightly warmer. So I'm going to bring up the temperature a notch and that's about it. Perfect. Now let's work a little more on the landscape in the foreground. I'm using a linear gradient to target the selection right here in the water. And I first want to make the brighter parts a little darker by bringing down the highlights. And then we want to go down to the clarity and bring it up a lot. Clarity does really help a lot with reflections like these, as you can see, makes it look much, much more awesome. Then let's create another linear gradient for the very near foreground, just covering these rocks and a little bit of the water. And what I want to do here is to add some kind of, of vignetting effect by very carefully bringing down the exposure. We need to be really careful to not introduce any underexposure, but we can pull it down quite a bit, just like this. All right, that looks great. We can also apply a little bit of dodging right here in the foreground. So let me create a luminance range mask. And I want to target these bright highlights of these rocks in the foreground. So I'm just clicking right in here. Of course, we are selecting way more than needed. So I'm going to cut down the luminance range by dragging these points further to the right. So this is looking like a pretty good selection. However, there's still more selected than needed. I'm going to click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose the brush. Let's bring down the feather here. And let's also bring down the brush size a bit. Now with the brush, I'm just painting over the areas which I want to make brighter. And you can see how we are nicely only selecting the highlights of those rocks. And now all we need to do is to bring up the exposure and we can also bring up the whites. Wonderful, that looks great. I do have a feeling the foreground is still a little bit too warm. So I wanna use another linear gradient covering the foreground like this and just bring down the temperature. I also feel like this might be a little too saturated. So let's bring down the saturation. I don't want to have this area too much of a blue color cast, but more of a grayish color. So that's looking great. Then let's work on the center part using a radial gradient covering pretty much this dark spot right here. I want to make it slightly brighter by bringing up the exposure. I also want to increase the shadows and let's bring up the whites. And again, let's bring down the saturation. I'm dropping the saturation a lot in this case, since there isn't any color in here, which is interesting anyways. So we can safely reduce that spot. Okay, 
Now there's just one more thing I want to do and that's to push the midtones contrast. We are going to do that using a luminance range mask. So for midtones contrast, we want to filter out the darkest tones and the brightest tones so that we are only left with the midtones. We're going to bring down this point for the blacks just a little bit. Let's say right about here to filter out the darkest areas. And I'm also going to bring down the point for the highlights. So right about here. And now we do have a very, very hard edge between highlights and shadows and these midtones. So how can we make it softer? We're clicking on this point and we want to drag it down further to the center of this line. Right around here looks good. And we do the same with the highlights to get a nice soft edge. So this is looking good. I do want to subtract a linear gradient coming down from the top since I like how the sky looks. I don't want to change that. I just want to affect the midtones of the landscape. Now with this mask set up, what we are going to do is to increase the exposure slightly. And to add contrast, we're going to slightly bring up the highlights and we're going to drop the shadows. Perfect, just like this. And the midtones look much, much better. Now that's the image after the masking adjustments. And this was our image with just a bit of base editing applied. Looks much better. And still you can see, we don't have to worry too much about the noise levels in this image. Thanks to the AI denoise feature. Now at this point, we can continue with a little bit of color grading and there's really not much involved in here. I'm not going to touch the color mixer. I want to head straight into the split toning section and let's start with the highlights. Of course, the highlights existing in this image are already quite warm. I want to emphasize this effect by adding some more warmer highlights with the split toning. So let's set up the hue. That's looking good. And let's bring up the saturation. I want to increase it quite a bit. So we do get some very nice warm highlights like this. And I also want to apply some warmer midtones. So in the midtones menu, let's bring up the hue. And I want to gently raise the saturation to not overdo it. Right about here looks fine. Okay. And for some color contrast, I want to head into the shadows, choose a cold hue and bring up the saturation just a little bit. Wonderful. That looks great. And now the final part of the color grading as always is happening in the calibration tab. And I'm just playing around with these sliders, bringing up the saturation of the red tones, of the green tones. Let's also raise blue. And let's bring down the blue primary hue. Perfect, that looks like a great image. Now the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's do that. What we want to do here is to bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down the Alt key so you can actually see where the sharpening is applied. And then I want to increase the amount of sharpening just like this. Done. And that's the image after the Lightroom editing without pretty much any noise thanks to AI denoise. I hope this little Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have questions or want to add something else to this editing process, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.